Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I have a lot of makeup, a lot of new makeup, some stuff that I've only used a handful of times, some things that are brand spanking new. Oh, I've been bad. I've been buying a lot of stuff. I've got some luxury lippies to share with you today. I picked up some stuff from one size, but I'm going to start with this. Okay. I was lamenting after I found out in, I think it was late January, early February, that Glossier was changing the formula of their balm.com. And my favorite has always been like the original formula. I used to buy it religiously in the three pack. And then they came out with a super fabulous shade for holiday last year called Swiss Miss. They brought it back this year. It's not called Swiss Miss anymore because it's not a collab, but it's hot cocoa. It smells like chocolate. It's amazing. They did update the packaging for this. So this is the original formula that has beeswax and lanolin and like a really hydrating thick formula, which I was like getting down to my last two tubes and I was like, Ugh. What am I gonna do? Anyway, so when they brought this back, they also brought it back in their cookie butter flavor. So I bought five. I spent $70 on lip balm. They're $14 a piece. They did update the packaging, so you are getting the slant tip. Mine looks a little ooey gooey because oh, she's been used, but I love this. It's a holiday exclusive. Here's hoping they bring back all the flavors in the original formula but if you like the original formula they have it right now i'll have it linked for you down below but been loving this this is going straight in my pocket because yeah i'll be wanting more of that later today here is something that i've been kind of reaching for this is interesting because i am not a primer sort of person this is from iconic london their underglow blurring primer it's kind of like a hydrating glowy primer that I have been putting kind of like a lot of it here um just all over my face I've been kind of focusing it on pores but just kind of everywhere and this is going over the top of all the rest of my skincare including my SPF for the day so I'm going to start with that. I have been liking the hydrated, but also um, slightly perfected because it does have a little bit of a of a glow to it. I feel like there is a little bit of that almost liquid highlight feel underneath all of my products. And I kind of have been liking that. Here's something else that's brand new. This is the new concealer from Estee Lauder. This is the Futurist Soft Touch Brightening Skin Sealer. I have the lightest shade. One of my favorite concealers. Let me grab it for you. This is one of my favorites. This is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Radiant Concealer, also in the lightest shade, 0 0.5. That's the shade of this. This, I feel, is supposed to be going with their new uh, Futurist Skin Tint. I like this a lot better. I do have the skin tint somewhere. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If you wanna see the like try on, I will link it for you here and the description box down below. But I have been liking the formula of this a lot better. The one thing I have not been liking is the shape of the applicator. Look, it's kind of weird. Um, and I feel like, here's the, here's the thing. When I'm pulling out like a regular doe foot, um, I feel like I'm getting enough on the applicator for like my whole face. And today my goal is not to wear concealer everywhere. This doesn't have stuff on the other side and I feel like I'm running out. And now I feel like, you know, if I wanted to get stuff over here, it's time to like dip back in. So I feel like the shape of the doe foot is not helping me to apply product right where I need it. And then I'm like, oh look, I'm out of product again. I feel like I'm perpetually dipping back in here. Is that the end of the world? No, but I feel like other doe foots are a little bit easier because this is the fourth time I've dipped in. And I'm like, wait, what? And I know you're you're kind of, you know, looking at me going, um, well, if you weren't using it like foundation, and I do that and I'm happy with that. I don't mind that. I feel like I was trying to show you <laughs> why I don't like it and I, I've probably over applied more than I intended to because I normally don't put on this much of this. The one thing I will say is I had problems with the future skin tint um, 
looking like it was sitting on the surface of my skin, I don't have that problem with this concealer. I feel like it actually looks really nice. And to maintain kind of the opacity where I want it, I'm gonna take a minute to kind of tap all of this out here and then I'll continue to blend it. Of course, I'm not gonna leave it like this, but I find that if I go in with a brush before it's kind of been spread out to where I want it, I tend to have um, more problems losing and I need to pull out, again, more product from the tube and that's not what I'm hoping for. So here's where I'm gonna go in with just a slightly smaller brush. If you're curious, I'm using the ones from Sydney Grace. Um, I have the F01 and the F04. So kind of like a foundation and a concealer brush. And I like these, these are really nice. I don't know if they're putting any of their brushes up for their Black Friday sale, but I know their Black Friday sale is coming. So I feel like this is a really good place for me to be with coverage. I'm happy with where things are. I feel like the sort of coverage that I'm getting from this, it looks like skin. And this is kind of what I was hoping that I would get from like this product here. This, I feel like the pigment is sitting on the surface of my skin. It doesn't wear the eight hours that it's supposed to. And I feel like this looks really beautiful and radiant all day long, giving just enough coverage, not too much. I usually don't spread on as much as I did. I was trying to prove a point to my detriment today, but a little bit lighter coverage than this is kind of what I've been liking. And I am always, always a fan of like concealer and blending it. Sometimes I do more of that than concealer and foundation just because like I'm always going to use concealer if I'm putting on makeup, but I'm not always going to reach for foundation. On the last day of the Sephora sale, I made a second purchase. I was trying really hard to just like not do that and I really wanted to try some stuff. Part of it came down to me hearing some people who I can always be influenced by talking about how much they like one size products. And I realized I had never tried anything from the one size by Patrick Starline. So I picked up a few things. Um, one of them is this, and this is Ultimate Setting Powder, and this is in the shade Ultra Pink. Now, I did pick up this uh, Givenchy Voil Rosé shade, which I have been lo loving, 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 but I have yet to try this kind of pink powder on the face. I'm not gonna set my whole face today. I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of this and I'm gonna start underneath my eyes. I know a pink powder like this can be very brightening and that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to make sure that I set my under eye, but that it also ends up giving a little bit of a bright, brightened look, but I don't know whether me and my 48 year old under eyes are gonna get along well with this powder, but we'll, we'll see. So right here, I feel like if I'm looking at the texture, I feel like it's doing a good job of mattifying. I don't feel like it's adding any additional texture. It doesn't make my under eyes look dry or crepey. That is huge for me. I'm also not putting on like a really, really large amount. I'm getting a little bit in my brush. I'm making sure to knock it off because my goal is to set, but not to really heavily powder. I'm not looking to bake. I feel like at my age, as I'm nearing 50, if I'm actually, you know, aggressively going in with powder, especially under my eyes, I'm asking for a bad outcome. I know that about myself, even with really light weight powders, like the Givenchy powder, the Prism Lead powder, which I love. And I'm just gonna continue to use this to set the parts of my face that I'm wanting to set, which is like right up here, under the eyes, nose, corners of the mouth, and then a little bit on the chin. Um, but I have to be really careful with how and where I powder as I get older. That is something that it used to not be a problem for me. I used to be able to cake my face in powder. Not anymore. If I want to look old, like a decade older than I am, if I want to look like I'm nearing 60 instead of nearing 50, that's the first thing. I could just throw caution to the wind and over powder and then it's, it was a choice and it was a bad one. You know, I actually feel like this looks really good. I wish, I'm gonna try and see if I can, instead of going like back and forth like this, it can kind of move the skin back and forth. I'm gonna try and just kind of stamp and press this into the under eye here because I feel like there were a, 
a couple of little crevices where I could still see concealer that was not fully set. Not on the other side, but on this one. I think it's pretty. I like the pink color. Um, I would kind of be curious to see what this would look like all over the face, but not today. Not today. I've been in love with this. This is the Skin Enhancer from Makeup by Mario. Oh my goodness. <gasps> I had no idea. I had no idea. I'm picking up a slightly angled brush. I'm bouncing any excess off the back of my hand. I really want kind of like a soft and seamless look today without it being too much. And I feel like a synthetic brush um, that has the ability to softly diffuse is really one of the easiest and best ways to just use this product. Um, I don't, I don't want a small brush that's going to like stamp it in one area. I like this really diffused. I mean, look how easy. How easy was that? I feel like Ina Garten. How easy was that? I feel like this and the Gucci bronzer have been like my two favorite bronzing products that I've tried so far this year. Like they pulled me in immediately the first time I used them. And I feel like if I'm not careful, those are the two things I default to. The Gucci bronzer for like a fully set day and this for days that I want a little bit of a glowier, dewier look. Oh my goodness. So good. Um, another thing I've been head over heels for are these Pillow Plush blushes from M, especially this shade right here in Peanut. And I'm just going to use, oh, I was going to like, I'll do it with my fingers. No, 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 no. I should probably do this with a brush. I don't want a ton of blush. I do want just a little bit of color. I'm going to probably go a little bit lighter than normal and maybe adjust after I get my lipstick on. I feel like sometimes that's when I realize, ooh, I need just a little bit more. I'm gonna admit that it's super kind of like finicky, but I do really love the look of the highlight kit from Katie Jane Hughes, the KJH brand, the Hypershine kit. Oh my goodness. I really do like it. Um, it is definitely one of those things that I don't do this every day. You're like, you know, like I want to, but oh, no, I don't actually do this every day because you gotta mix it up. But look at that glow. Isn't that just beautiful? Oh, I wish it wasn't so, you know, I wish I didn't have to mix it. That's, that's really what I wish. But I like that it doesn't actually disturb anything that I have down previous of that. I made a purchase from Victoria Beckham while the site was having a 20% off because I have been really wanting to try the eyewears. These are a matte eyeshadow stick. And I've heard nothing but rave reviews from Khaki about these. And I picked up like her two favorite shades. One is a really light shade called Trench. And the other one is Pecan. So I'm using these today. I really like the way that the packaging feels really like nice and luxe and metallic. So I'm going to start with the lightest shade. I'm going to put this like all over the eye. I feel like I've seen her do this so many times where she doesn't worry about instantly blending. And there are some other ones that like, if you don't blend right away, <gasps> danger, danger, Will Robinson. And that is not the case here. And I like that. I like that I can like swipe these on, take a minute to find, you know, okay, what am I going to want to blend with? And then go in and give these a blend. This is the second time I've used these and man, super easy. I also feel like they wear really well. And um, they're kind of like beginner friendly. It's really easy to add color without having to be too precise, you know, scribble it on and then blend it out. I have been trying a few more luxury brands on the regular. I, I kind of have, I don't know what it is. And it, it might just be something that happens every fall. I was looking back through some videos where I was like, I bought a lot of luxury lipsticks last fall. And I feel like I've been kind of leaning into a few more luxury brands like uh, Givenchy and Gucci and um, YSL. And I feel like that's one of those things where I wasn't always comfortable spending luxury prices on makeup. I was really happy in like the high drugstore prices and the high-end stuff. But the minute we started getting into luxury, I was like, eh, that's, that's a lot. But I am more curious these days. And I definitely feel like 
If I really meant to say I love this high-end formula over a luxury formula, have I tried all the other luxury formulas? So I'm trying to slowly amass like different formulas from different brands so I can have kind of like a, a little bit more of a knowledge base. Some things from Victoria Beckham and me, fabulous, and other things I just realized like I really wanted to like it and it it wasn't for me. I'm gonna do a really easy eye look today. I'm gonna pull out the Moon Dust from Urban Decay. This is the Space Rider, one of their holiday sets, but I love that these have kind of like that really easy metallic look. I'm gonna take this one here called Cosmic Space Dust and I'm just gonna tap it over the eye. We're getting closer and closer to holiday and I want stuff that's easy and like no effort. And I feel kind of like that's what I've got going on here today. Easy, and I don't need a lot of time or effort to do this. Before I get going any farther, I, I feel like I can't keep looking at myself unless I put out some eyebrows. So give me a second and let me throw on some eyebrows. I can't believe we're so close to Thanksgiving and I feel like Thanksgiving is just a stone's throw away from Christmas and I am not ready. I hope that your holiday plans are um, going really well. I feel very much like, oh, no, panic, panic. Um, I have family coming for Thanksgiving, and I'm so excited about that. But I also, like, I don't have a menu together. I just need to get my ducks in a row. I need to, you know, stop whatever else I'm doing and just like, okay, you can't get up from your desk until you have, like, a grocery list, until you have, like, meal planning done because I'm going to have company and I'm going to have nothing to feed them. Oh. And let's not even talk about like gifts. No, we, we, we will just pretend it is not happening. Here's one of the things I was really excited to try because I heard somebody raving about this. This is from One Size. This is the Point Made Liquid Eyeliner. This is just the black shade. I think they only have a black. I don't know. I know they have a black and a brown in their gel pencil, but I think it might just be the black liner in this. Now, I always prefer a brush tip. This is a felt tip, but I don't know that that... I'm struggling more now with the fact that I gave my lashes a really good curl and now I'm trying to like kind of push them down to draw on my eyeliner. So the other thing I've been liking, I've tried this a couple times already, is that this little felt tip point is great for just like jabbing in between the lashes. There are some places where you can see skin toned gaps and I like that this kind of just helps to make the lash line look a little bit darker. Now, if you want like a really like full on line with this, you certainly can, but I like that it is really black, that it is matte. Um, this kind of stands up pretty good to my leaky left eye, which is one of the things I'm always looking for. I think the only way I would make this better would be brush tip, but I feel like it's pretty easy to use. I'm pretty happy with the way the eyeliner turned out. I like the eyeliner. I did feel like as I was getting towards the end of like really perfecting the line and getting in between all of my little lashes at the lash line, it was getting just a little bit dry at the end of the felt tip, but it could just be that, um, I don't know, it came in a set. There was a set for $25. It was marked down to $20 and I was like, yeah, and it was this eyeliner and a full size of their fantasized mascara and I was like yeah and I'm kind of wondering if these got put in a set because maybe they've been around for a while and they needed to you know clear the warehouse I don't know um I think I feel like I would reserve judgment until I got another full size one of these because I've heard so many people talk about how great it is I do find that it is very waterproof it does stand up to my leaky left eye, which is important. The other thing that I have really fallen in love with, oh my goodness, is this. This is also from One Size. This is the Point Made um, Busty Brown 24-Hour Gel Eyeliner Pencil. So this is one that I have used, you know, like above the lash line, in between the lashes to fill in those skin tone gaps. But I have been liking this for the upper waterline. Now, when I blink, like before it's fully set, I do get a modicum of transfer to the lower lash line, but I can clean that out with a Q-tip. And after it's dry, no more transfer. I've been really liking this. So I'm gonna make a scary face here and use this just to 
go in my upper waterline and blank out all of those. I don't know, it just makes my lashes look a little bit longer, a little bit fuller. I'm gonna throw on the Fantasize Mascara. I don't know that this is my favorite mascara. Um, it does a pretty good job. It does have one of those kind of silicone wands where, you know, it's got the little teeny tiny kind of can grab every hair, but I feel like this is a little dry. Maybe this formula starts out dry, but it's a lot drier than I expected to find it. And I think that's maybe why I came to that conclusion. I wonder if these have been sitting around you know, on the warehouse shelf for a while, they hadn't been moving it, and they're like, let's make a holiday set. You know, two full sizes for 20 bucks. I feel like that's a great price. Now, I feel like it does a good job of not getting too clumpy. Um, I don't find that I have any like fallout or smudging, but I've only been wearing this mascara like three or four times. But I feel like Unless things dramatically change, I, I like something that starts out not quite soupy and wet, but this is almost like to the point of it feels like I've had it open for a couple of months and I might get like another three or four weeks out of it and then it's like, and we're done. And I've only had it open for about a week, week and a half now. I just wiped off my balm.com because I wanted to show you the new luxury lip products I purchased. One was from Victoria Beckham. This is the Posh Gloss. This is the shade Poolside. Um, this is one that I, I think I tried on once, but I haven't really worn it since sitting here. I've been going for the eyeshadows a little bit more. This is a really thin formula. I feel like it's just slightly tacky and not in a sticky or goopy way. I feel like it has a really pretty shine to it. Um, I'm curious to see how it wears. I probably won't be test driving it today. But my one concern is I feel like it really highlights like right at the vermilion border <laughs> where you see all of the fine lines in my lips here, here, and it, that it might just like, I don't know. I'm really curious to see how this wears, but I do like this color. I like that it's um, thin and pretty, and I've been loving a glossy lip. I've been really leaning into lip oils, but uh, this lip gloss from Victoria Beckham will be one that I will have to update you later on. I got four new luxury lipsticks. Okay, one is a formula that I already have one of. I just wanted a different color and it is the Velvet Lipstick from Dior. Oh my goodness. I really love the shade Dior Forever 999. <laughs> And this is shade 999. And I really fell in love with the Velvet formula when I picked one up um, right after the spring event from Sephora. Um, I went looking for this one. They didn't have it in stock at Sephora. So I used a 20% off coupon and I got it through Ulta. I love the way that this feels on. Um, the other shade in the Velvet formula that I have is shade 100. It's a really pale nude shade, and I love the texture of it. I like that it's hydrating. I like that it does have just a slight, it's kind of like a demi-matte. I wouldn't say it's completely matte matte, but give it like 10, 15 minutes, and you're not gonna see even this subtle glow at, it at all. It's gonna definitely look matte, but right now as it goes on, I like that it's not tugging, that it's not dry, that it doesn't pull or skip. Um, that's the one thing that I never really want from a lip product, especially now that I'm getting older, but I'm really excited to have this. I've been buying a lot of red lipstick recently, especially expensive red lipstick, like that one from Valentino. Um, I have another one here, another fancy red one, but I'll just tell you, I like this. I'm glad I have it. I think this might be one of my go-to winter reds. The next luxury lipstick is my first Chanel lipstick in a long time. This is the Rouge Allure Extract lipstick and this is, they're calling this a refillable lipstick. Okay, this was, oh, how much was this? I'll have to put it up on the screen for you but I was like wait what? Now remember I got 20% off. I didn't pay the full price for this but this doesn't feel like an expensive bougie lipstick. This feels really, really lightweight. And if this is the part that's refillable, or is it, oh no, it's this. Okay, so even this here, this feels really chintzy. I do like that the packaging is one of those where you just 
you know, press the double C's on the bottom and it pops out. But mm, I don't know. I don't know, Chanel. This, by the way, is shade 818 Rose Independent. I wasn't really, ooh. Okay, I, I like the way that it feels. It glides. Okay. I'm a little, I'm a little, I don't know. Okay, I love the way, I love the color. I really love the color of this. I really like the way that it looks on the lips. I feel like this is a little bit better, just a hint of lip liner, especially along the top lip, is gonna help to kind of really even out the edge of my lip. And normally with all lipsticks, I'm wearing a lip liner these days. I used to be able to go without a lip liner when I was younger, those days are over, your girl needs a lipstick all the time. But I like this color and I love the feel of this lipstick. This is really hydrating. It has a really beautiful glide and slip to it. It feels very luxurious on. I'm not noticing a scent from this, but like it's itty bitty. Look how tiny it is. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's expensive for what it is, but on first application, I'm liking this. I feel like I got the right shade because I tend to go for a lot of mauvey pinks or dusky nudes or reds. And I, I'm like, break out of your comfort zone. You look good in other colors too. And I feel like this is one of those shades that's gonna be really great because it's got a little bit of that, I don't know, it feels kind of like a, like a pretty coral, almost like a peony sort of shade. I like it. I think this is beautiful. The other two lipsticks I have are both from Givenchy. I tried a sample size of their silk lipstick. It comes in the kind of like the exterior packaging looks like it's black leather. Um, I tried it earlier this spring and I'll, although I really liked the color, I did not really feel like um, the formula and I got along. It felt like it was dry and like it dried out my lips. And here I am buying two matte lipsticks but I'm super curious. This one right here is the sheer matte. By the way, this one right here is shade number 16. Oh my goodness. Okay, I love the way this feels. I'm hoping against all hopes that this is not going to dry my lips out the way the other Givenchy lipstick did. This kind of feels like the Generation G lipstick from Glossier. What other lipstick do I have that kind of has this feel? Like the Matte Balm from NARS, a matte but sheer bullet lip product. I like it. There is a fragrance to this. It definitely has that luxury lipstick, highly fragranced. I don't know. It smells a little floral. Uh, it's not my favorite, but I don't know that it's gonna linger too much, but I love this color and I love the finish of this. And because I do like a slightly blurry lip, I feel like this is one that, you know, I could very easily let just kind of do its own thing and I would be really happy. I don't know that I would have to wear a lip liner with this. It doesn't um, drag, it's not dry, it doesn't skip but it all comes down to what do my lips look like at the end of a day. So give me a while to check back with you on all of these lipsticks, but this one, I'm liking that it, it looks almost like my lips, but better. And this is not a my lips, but better shade where they look shiny or they look glossy. This looks like it could naturally be like just my lips. Now I did kind of go over it several times, but if I were to do just like one or two passes, I think it would look even more like, I'm not wearing lipstick, but I feel like the lighter nude shades would really lend themselves to you finding your perfect no makeup makeup lip product. If you're not a big lipstick person, you might like this because it doesn't look shiny. I like that it's kind of like a luxury indulgence while not looking like it's too much. It feels kind of understated. I like that. The last luxury lipstick I have is another Givenchy. This is the Deep Velvet. This is their powdery, long-lasting matte lipstick, but like super pigmented. I have the shade number 36. Okay, I knew I wanted to wear red today, so I'm gonna end on this one. Oh my goodness, this one looks <gasps> pretty, so pretty, so pretty. Oh, wow. <laughs> I feel like it just kind of like, I was trying to place it and it just kind of like, whoop. It's kind of, it's got more glide than I expected a matte lipstick to have. 
Okay. I feel like my Cupid's bow was a little, a little aggressively applied there. I really did not expect this to just, it's gliding kind of like a cream, a really hydrating cream lipstick. That's interesting. Okay, I really, I love this. First of all, component, it's so pretty. It has a little bit of a hefty weight to it. I do like that both of these have actual velvet on them. I think that's a really nice touch. Um, I feel like without the lipstick in there, this feels like a little, a little lightweight and chintzy, but you're getting a lot of heft here. I do also like that we have these two aspects to the bullet so you know exactly how it goes in the packaging and it fits in really nice. I'm kind of worried that these are gonna get like gross in my handbag, like they're gonna get fluff stuck to uh, the velvet, but I'll probably try and keep them, you know, very carefully when I take them with me. I feel like this lipstick, although it does have that matte appearance, whereas the other one from Dior looked a little bit slightly like a demi-matte going on, this definitely looks more matte. I feel like it has a little bit more depth to it, but it also has a really nice opacity and a really nice feel on the lips. Sometimes a long wearing matte lipstick can feel dry, can feel tight, and I can feel it like straight from the bullet. I instantly think of Max Ruby Woo. <laughs> that retro matte, oh my goodness, now that I'm getting, you know, close to 50, my lips cannot handle the retro matte formula anymore. I want a matte lipstick that's gonna be comfortable, which is why I love the Lisa Eldridge matte lipstick formula, but I wanted to see what other luxury brand mattes feel like. These ones are both really nice. I like this one from Dior. I haven't tried any of the Chanel mattes, but I'm really, I'm, gonna, I'm going to. Let me show you some swatches. I feel like you can see the difference in the reds here. This is the one from Dior, the Velvet Matte in 999. This one here is the 818 from Chanel, the Allure Matte or the Rouge Allure. This one here is the Sheer Velvet from Givenchy and I, you can see that I did kind of layer it up because one swipe on its own it was almost like wait is it there <laughs> but I, I'm really intrigued by by this one and this is the one that I have on right now this is the deep matte in number 36 from Givenchy um, but I'm definitely kind of going for a mood with some of these deeper shades I am excited to wear these as we head into the holidays, but let me tell you, I feel like sometimes packaging kind of lets me down. I was a little bit like, hmm, with the Chanel packaging, but the formula feels amazing. And I'm a little bit concerned that maybe these guys aren't going to last really well in my handbag without getting kind of scratched or the flocking to come off the velvet or that they're gonna be like collecting little dust bunnies in my purse. I'm just gonna have to be careful and remind myself that I paid a lot for these lipsticks and I want them to look pretty for the long run. But I really do, like the look and the feel of this. Oh, I have a little bit of red on my teeth. Okay, Th these are the sorts of things that I'm looking for. Is this gonna turn into a high maintenance red? I don't know, I'll have to wear it and let you know. Thank you so much for watching today. It's gonna take me a while to do a makeup updates based on what I tried today. I feel like there are a few things here that are still fairly new. I haven't tried enough, like especially all of these lip products. I might just do like a lip product update at a later date and not include it with the rest of the makeup. But I'm really curious to see whether I keep reaching for this new concealer, whether this one size powder, I like it so much I have to get the full size, or this eyeliner. Is it just old or is it just, you know, I got a bum one? I don't know. But there are other things that have been really exciting me, like these eyewearers from Victoria Beckham and the gel liner from One Size. Oh my goodness, so many beautiful things. Um, make sure to check back with me later when I do a makeup updates. I would love to know what sort of products are you reaching for? What sort of things, even though they may not necessarily be new, um, not a new release, that you're kind of going like, hmm, I'm curious, because that was me and these Victoria Beckham products. That was me and like the one size stuff. That was definitely me and you know, these luxury lipsticks. They're not necessarily new, but I do have some new things that are kind of pulling me in that I'm like, huh, I don't know. Let's find out. Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day and I will see you again soon.